Okay, so uh, let's start. First thing what we need to do, we need uh, to create uh, our emitter object. We can just create a couple of boxes or just one box and uh, just create some uh, box element. I'm gonna control click, select box. Okay, all right, click on it, convert to an eligible poly. Go to the front viewport by pressing F, click W, and I'm gonna just uh, make uh, not really a general shape, but uh, like if I break down the cloud to the most basic shape, that's what I'm gonna create right now. So I'm gonna just put this one up here, scale it in. You don't have uh, really to follow what I'm doing here, you could just uh, create any shape you want. As long as it's a random shape. Okay. Let's push this one out to the side here. And shift drag again. I'm gonna put this one right here. Okay, and I'm actually gonna rotate it this way. You could rotate these two. As you can see, it's very simple shape, nothing big at all. I'm gonna select uh, one of those boxes, right click on it, convert it to an edible poly, right click again, and select uh, the multi attach here, control plus A, and select click attach. Now we have our emitter object, I'm gonna just rename it emitter. Okay, that's all really what we need to do as uh, far as the geometry. One thing, let's uh, just uh, zero out our uh, translation here. So I'm going to click uh, F12, W. I'm going to center the pivot first. I'm going to affect pivot only, center to object. Next, I'm going to zero out everything here. Actually, the Z, I'm going to leave it up here. That's fine. I'm gonna reset the X form, reset selected, collapse, collapse selected. Okay. Now let's uh, get our uh, scene here ready to work with the particles. So I'm gonna click uh, six, select my PF. Okay, I'm gonna click Control plus X to hide everything that I don't need. I'm gonna hide this menu bar here too. And I'm gonna deselect the grid and change my color here back um, background color to black by pressing Alt plus B, use environment background and click OK. When I right click New Particle Systems, Empty Flow, the usual. I'm gonna just set the viewport to 100%. I'm not gonna exceed that amount, so I'm gonna just leave it as is and the viewport I'm gonna set it to half frame. Now I'm gonna create a birth. I'm gonna connect this one over here. For the birth event here, I'm gonna set it to emit a thousand particle. And for the position, we're gonna create our own uh, data operator position, okay? So I'm gonna right click, append operators, data operator. I'm gonna push this one under the birth, click auto update, edit data flow. I'm gonna select object. First thing, I'm gonna select my geometry. I know what I need to do. I need uh, to have uh, a random uh, distribution of my uh, particle on this uh, geometry, and at the same time, I want to uh, to give it a random uh, z position. So uh, first, uh, first thing, let's uh, grab uh, a random uh, uh, points on the surface. So what I need, I need a geometry node here. I'm gonna set it to point position, and as you can see, the point position needs has two nodes: had uh, an input of a geometry node or an object node, and an input of a pair. A, a pair is uh, a value that contain a, ve a vector and integer, an integer uh, value. A vector usually uh, refers to the position of that point or the position of that vertex, and integer, an integer usually uh, re usually represent either the birth ID or the index number of that uh, uh, point or vertex. So I'm going to connect this one over here. 
and I'm gonna from the geometry here I'm gonna select the closest uh, point by surface as you can see it's giving me an uh, output of pair actually instead of closest I want a random a random surface point okay and uh, I want to output this uh, it seems like I selected point opacity I want point position okay and I want to output this as a position vector put standard output standard position vector connect this one over here and as you can see now we have a vector we have a random point spread all on, all on our surface okay now what I need to do, I need uh, to give it a random uh, Z position. So uh, to, uh, to manipulate the Z position, what we need to do, we need uh, to manipulate the vector uh, value that's coming out from uh, the random surface point here. As I said, it has a pair value and the pair value contain a vector and uh, an integer uh, value. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, split the integer and the vector from uh, this information here. And after that, we're going to put them back together to connect them over here. To split the vector on the integer from the pair value, I'm going to use a convert node. I'm going to change it from a vector to a pair, pair to a vector here. And I'm going to get a grab another uh, convert node here and pair to integer. Okay, so this way I have my integer and my vector. I'm going to connect this one over here and this one over here. So now we have our vector, so we could uh, modify it now. So what I want, I want, I don't want to change the X and Y, I want to just change the Z position. So I'm going to grab a scalar here. I'm going to give it, uh, change it to float, set the value to zero here. And I'm going to assign this to our, uh, to another new vector that has going to have the X and Y of zero. And for our Z, I'm going to give it a random node. I'm going to set it to exponential i'm gonna leave it at one right now sorry i have a little, uh, little bit of cold here uh, the weather just changed yesterday today it was like 70 degrees yesterday and uh, today it was snowing so i had a little cold on me so let's go back so i said the zero is going to be have the x and y so i'm gonna just connect this zero here to a convert node again and i want a real to vector uh, R1 and R2 and R3 they represent the X and Y and Z so the X and Y should be 0 and the Z should have this uh, random exponential number here now I'm gonna add these two vectors together when I do add them the X and Y won't have any change but then the only value that's gonna change is gonna be the Z position so I'm gonna add the function and as you can see, it's already have a vector plus a vector. That's what I need. I'm going to connect this one over here and this one over here. Now I have a, a vector and I have uh, my pair here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put uh, those uh, two back to be uh, a pair value so I can connect it to my position. Okay. To do that, I need another convert node. Uh, vector to pair as you can see here it is giving me two inputs of two integers I don't need the two I need just uh, one integer here so I'm gonna turn off the i3 as object index I'm gonna switch the position of the vector and the integer here connect the integer right here and the vector right here now I'm going to disconnect this uh, input that we did uh, at the beginning and I'm going to connect this one over here then as you can see now our Z position is random I'm going to just maximize this one here and make it uh, a little bit uh, more readable okay
Okay, that's good enough. Then you could change the X and Y too if you want to by just changing this value here. Uh, but uh, all that we need to do, as I said, we need to just change the Z value here, okay? So now if I wanna give it more random, let's say just uh, change this mean value here. Okay, if I set it to zero, nothing is happening. It's back to our uh, natural value. If I increase it, that's what I get. And at the same time, we could uh, have uh, different seeds. Okay, one more thing. It's uh, right now, if I play my animation, you're gonna see you're gonna change every time, in every single frame, and we don't want that. Because uh, this uh, whole, uh, the whole thing is being evaluated every single frames. We don't want that. We want the whole thing to be evaluated just at the beginning of the animation or only if those uh, particles are new in this uh, event. So I'm going to add an input standard here. I'm going to set it to a new in event and connect it over here. This triangle actually acted as an on and off switch. So uh, this will not be executed unless uh, this uh, um, event uh, is uh, true so if the particle is not new in this event this is not gonna happen okay now uh, let's expose some parameters that we're gonna be uh, using one well, the first parameter here is the emitter instead of using a single object I'm gonna set it to multiple objects because you could use multiple objects so I'm gonna set it to multiple object and just uh, select uh, my box again Okay, so I'm going to right click on this, expose, select my object, label it as pick emitter, click add, uh, the next that I want, I want the exponential, which is this one here, I need to change the, I need the mean. And the mean gonna give it the name of uh, Z position. I'm gonna click add. Then I'm gonna add this seed too. Actually, I'm gonna keep uh, at the variation too. So Z position variation. I'm gonna add it. And I'm gonna add the random seed here. I'm going to select the random seed and I'm going to just name it seed. And click add. I'll close it. I'll close this and as you can see now we have our Z position right here. The Z variation. And a seed. Different seed. So uh, this is uh, the first part in uh, this uh, tutorial. In the next part, what we're going to do, we're going to add a uh, shape to our uh, uh, clouds here or our uh, particles. And at the same time, we're going to add more uh, information here or, or more uh, control, like to uh, to control the scale, to control the rotation and everything. So it will be a completely procedural uh, custom cloud. Okay, so see you guys in the next uh, video.